Sean, Corey, welcome to Roxane TV. How are you doing? Excellent. Good. Very good. Good, good. You've been, yeah. been uh, touring around England for the last couple of days. How's mm. it all been? Uh, good, man. Very. I mean, the shows have been great. The kids have been great. I mean, everything's been awesome. So, Breathtaking shows. <laughs> They have been. They have been. The gigs have been Actually. so hot, you just yeah. can't catch your breath when yeah, you're on you stage. It's like walking around in taking. soup. Yeah, cool. good times. How, how do you think it's compared to the last time you are over, excluding download, obviously? Uh, many more people. Yeah. <laughs> no, no it's, I mean, it's, it's uh, I don't know. It, it just feels like something's happening, you know? I mean, every show, like, the, the, the kids are just so over the top, you know? They know every word. They... They respond to everything that we do. I mean, it's just been, it's just been incredible. It, it's, it's really made us feel at home. You know? There's a level of energy that uh, wasn't necessarily lacking the last time. It's just, it's grown, as he said. You just, yeah. you can just feel it. Mm. I've never seen so many people singing along with the songs mm -mm. as we've seen in these shows. Cool. What do you think that is? On the first album, people seem to be very dismissive of the fact that it was Stone Sour was just a side project for Slipknot. Do you feel like you've overcome that this second time round? I think it's a little bit of that. I, I also think that, you know, I mean, I, this, the, not knocking the first album, but I think the second album is, is stronger on a lot of levels, where it was, it was easier for people to embrace. Like, it, they could feel where we were coming from a little easier than they did on the first album. So it was a little, uh, it was a little more to get behind, I guess, maybe. And, um, I think that helped them rediscover what was really good about the first album and get excited about that. I've kind of noticed that uh, the uh, there's not that Corey Taylor and Jim Root unmasked yeah. hanging over this one like there was so much on the first one because it seemed like there was, we kind of got shoved aside to here's what they look like without masks. Yeah. Here's Corey and Jim from Slipknot. And it just, it got pushed like that so hard. There's much more of a band feel. Yeah. Like a band, like embracing the band as a whole. Yeah, because yeah. that's totally. happened now, so it's, yeah. everyone's already yeah. accepted that. I mean, at the time, Sean, how did that make you feel? Because, I mean, you were in the band originally when it first got together, to have that sort of, be almost sidestepped for the, for the superstars in the band. I understood it, because I just think it's natural. I mean, Slipknot's a monster. It's just, it's a huge machine that's done groundbreaking things so you just you've got to kind of have to expect that mm. if you don't you're you're not thinking clearly yeah. uh, did it bother me well of course a little bit but at the same time what Corey brings to any band he's in that's it's an easy cross to bear and we also when we would get together as just as friends I mean there was always there was never that you know we always made sure that we stayed a band and we didn't kind of pull ourselves away. I mean, well, even we also we reinforced the band feel. So we, so when we did come out on stage and it was a little, you know, oh, Corey, Corey, I just couldn't be like, whatever. Well, you'll you hear know. that tonight. Yeah, well, probably. You will. But, That's okay. Though. And you'll hear me go, shut up. You know, and it's because at the end of the day, we couldn't do this unless it was all five of us. And that's what's very important about it. Now, Corey, you've obviously been doing Slipknot stuff in between the two albums. Mm. Sean, what have you been up to in the time off? Uh, no time off for me. I was out with Slipknot <laughs> as uh, stage left guitar tech and stage manager. Yeah. Cool. So you get to see both sides of both bands, effectively. Yeah, I have since uh, 99. Yeah. Mm. How, how has the sort of Slipknot camp changed from your perspective working with them? Uh, the band themselves have stayed pretty much consistent. The crew, I ended up being the only person that <laughs> was from the beginning, so yeah. that was radical change. Mad enough to stay with them. I, I guess. <laughs> then again, I mean, in the beginning, Sean was the crew. That's you know, true. He was the one dude we had. Yep, 20 bucks a day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Love that. He made as much as the band did, yeah. really. Yeah, it was crazy. You've said in the past in Roxanne that you weren't particularly happy with the way that the first album came out in retrospect. How do you feel six months down the line of come whatever may? Do you still feel as happy with it as you did then? Oh, I'm ecstatic. I'm still. I, I still listen to it every day, every other day. And uh, you know, slowing down. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Totally right. Um, I'm just. I'm just really happy that this this far into my career, I'm still making music that I can enjoy, and that is coming like closer and closer to how, like. I want to hear it, you want to hear it. I mean, just 
that we still we're still putting out stuff that we can embrace and really get behind, you know. And I uh, I think it's uh, I'm I mean I, I'm completely floored by how like how much people are really getting behind it, you know. I mean, it has really got a great reception. It has, man. I mean, critically, I mean, I mean, just from I mean, just from the audience as a whole as well. I mean, people are really responding to it. I'm just like, wow, it's just it's insane. I hope I never lose that. You know, I really don't. It's the album I've always wanted to make. Yeah. 